Hello, my name is Crane. I grow cut flowers in my backyard and I sell them at my roadside stand. However, I already closed my stand for this season. But in this video, I will show you my natural style cottage home garden in November. And I will tell you why I'm so passionate about this style of the garden. And also show you what are still blooming in my garden and the little things little tips and ideas if you are interested to do the same thing in your home garden. Let's go! In front of you is the production cut flower garden which is our main garden for cut flowers and in front of you here is our unheated greenhouse and on the left here is the little shed that we have in the back and also the gnome house our property and on the fence here the lawn on the other side of the fence is our neighbor's property but we love this lawn so much because at night the deer will come here and we love seeing the deer eating the grass here and here is our pool this is the back of our house but I will show you the front later and we have two more sheds here Last week we got light frost for two nights However, the roses don't mind light frost at all Light frost means, you know, maybe two or three hours is go below the freezing point And this is just regular landscape rose, but I can use it for cutting too Marigold is one of the flowers that is very very hardy uh, It can handle light frost pretty well the most important thing in my opinion to create a natural style garden that looks beautiful but not too wild is the structure. In our garden we have so many mature trees and we use them as the structure of our garden. The yellow one there is ginkgo tree and the red one in front of the ginkgo tree is dogwood and in fall it's choice best color. The greenhouse is also considered as a structure of our garden. We create a path in the middle to go to the greenhouse to make it look more organized, you know, not too wild. But again, we grow some native grasses and flowers right in these two gardens. This is Echinacea. And you can see the bird come to eat the seeds. That's why I don't cut them back yet. And in front of the greenhouse, we have this boxwood and English roses. This is not just for the landscape, but they are also good cut flowers. Our greenhouse, we intentionally painted brown color because we would like it to blend in with the trees and the garden. We cannot heat this greenhouse because that will cost us so much money. But more important than that, we want to grow with the nature. You can see here, although we got some light frost last week and the temperature got pretty cold at night, but we still have tomato in this unheated greenhouse. The way it works is that at the daytime, it will capture the heat from the sunlight. And then at night, the temperature here will be warmer from the outside. Not just because of the heat, but also because of the protection from the wind. These are sweet peas that I just saw about two or three weeks ago. And they will stay here in this unheated greenhouse and in spring they will grow very fast 
and they will produce beautiful flowers in about mid spring. And here is our main cut flower production garden. That means we set up this garden to be very productive. We optimize, you know, the rows and also the irrigation system here to make sure that we get a lot of cut flowers from this garden and also easy to harvest. The flowers that are still blooming here is snapdragon. They are considered cool flowers, that means they don't mind the you know, cooler temperature. Here is Dahlia. They got some damage from the frost last week, but they still produce beautiful flowers here. Behind the Dahlia, I have the Cosmos that sell seed from last year. Cosmos this time of the year will produce such a big beautiful blooms. And the bees love them. Straw flowers are also cool flowers. That means they don't mind light frost. And they will produce blooming and blooming until it gets really really cold. They are also such a wonderful dry flowers too. The trees, the borders, the shrubs that is behind this production garden protect my flowers from strong wind, from harsh weather condition. Right here is the seniors that they are done done but I don't have the heart to cut them yet because the birds still come and eat the seeds of the cinnias right here. The next row, I grow a lot of native flowers for the birds, for the insect, like this Echinacea. And I tuck in some cosmos there to just bright it up. Some flowers here are not native, but about 90% are native. This very tall flower here is native Rubeckia maxima. The goldfinch love this seed so much, so I can't cut it back yet. And these are scabiosa that sell seed. I hope they will survive in winter, but if not, I can just do a new one. Right here is snapdragon, Madame Butterfly. They are so amazing. I planted them since April and they are still blooming. They're such a good cut flowers. If you are starting, you know, try Snapdragon. More store flowers right there. And behind here, I have some native plants that sell seed. I just leave it there, although they grow on the path. And in front of you is the rocks that Jason got it from free from Facebook Marketplace. Also our campsite. And the pond right there. These trees not only provide a little extra protection for my cut flowers garden, but they also home for so many babies that I love them so much. The birds, the insects, the worms, squirrels, chipmunk, and they are just beautiful and they add so much natural looking to my garden. The little bridge there is the path to our wonderful neighbor who is also value wildlife and right here is our vegetable garden. Although we have the fence right there, we have additional fence here to protect our vegetable from rabbit and groundhog. What I still have here is cilantro, which is cool season vegetables, and I love eating that so much. In the middle here, I just planted about 50 or 60 ranunculus corn that will bloom in early spring. 
On the very back of our garden, we have five compost pile right there. We store some woods from the trees that fall down. And there's a little creek right here. I will show you in a second. This is spring water that come from somewhere about half a mile away. Oh, can you see the squirrels? Hello. What he's doing? Hold on. Hello. Oh, oh, oh. This is Ginkgo. They have such a wonderful foliage. Oh my god. And the tree here is cottonwood tree. It's a fast growing native tree. Although we got some light frost, but our tomatoes still producing. This lettuce is so wonderful. I don't even eat them so much, but the flowers here look so nice with the pumpkins that we put it here for the kids in October. And the bees love these flowers so much. That's why we don't have the heart to cut them back yet. Dahlia Sweet Natalie here still blooming in our cottage garden. This hydrangea in summer, they are blue or purple, but in fall, they turn to the pink color. And this is one of the reasons that I love to grow perennials because they change throughout the season. And the yellow berries here in front of me is holly. I am so lucky that I inherited this holly from the previous owner of the house. I transplant a lot of plants from the other garden to this garden because I, I can't get rid of them because they were planted by the previous owner who loved gardening so much. And this is kind of, you know, garden that <laughs> has so many kinds of plants. The brown flowers there is hydrangeas. I don't cut the flower back because you can see it goes very good with this garden and it provides such a natural structure in fall and winter time. So I won't cut the flower head until spring. Also this sedum autumn joy, they are very very easy to grow and they will turn to darker red and eventually brown in winter time. I will keep posting garden tour you know every month to show you what my garden looks like in winter. You can see here that our garden is not the cleanest garden in the world. The leaves are everywhere. There's a lot of dead stuff in the garden. But because of the structure that we have here, still make it look beautiful and unique and look natural. This tree is variegated maple. They have green, cream, variegated foliage in spring and then they turn very green in summer but in fall they turn into this variegated orangey red it's so beautiful and again we got this from the previous owner as well right here is flowering dogwood it showed its best color last week um, if you want to see it you know you can check my previous video and in front of us is the gnome house. Right in front of you is our new garden. 
and the messy stuff here is seniors. You can see here we use a lot of natural stuff to fill our flower bed, including the logs, the little branches, the leaves, and some dirt, and some compost, and some roots. We will top all of this with compost in spring, and then they will break down slowly. Would it cause some problem? Mm, I'm sure that always some problems, but we're gonna try to stay with the natural method as much as possible. To give you some confidence, we did the same thing with this two flower bed in front of you last year. And you can see here the tree and the flowers here, they are just happy. As long as you top them with a lot of compost. In this garden, I also have this crimson azalea because it has red leaf in fall time and that gives so much interest in fall or early winter. I tuck in some hollyhock in the middle of the bush so in springtime, I have some flowers in this garden. In front of you here is variegated holly to give the contrast between the blue spruce and the pine tree right there. I also plant some dark foliage in this garden like this sand cherry to make the garden look more interesting and more colorful. But these flowers, they are trying to grow in the middle of the two rows. These are rubegia. I didn't do anything with them at all. They just grow on itself. This is cosmos sulfur, but they kind of done. And this is our koi pond. They are pretty messy right now. So maybe I'll show you the pond in springtime or maybe in next summer. The next garden I want to show you is our woodland garden. I have one video about this garden back in spring. You can go check it out. I would like this garden to support the wildlife 100%. You see the pile there of the sticks and the dead stuff? That is my insect hotel. Um, in front of you here on the right is burning bush. They are very invasive. I think eventually I'm going to take it out. And here is the arch from birch tree that Jason built to match the woodland garden. You're not gonna believe that there's so many flowers in this garden, but they bloom in spring. Do you know that oak trees in America is very important for the environment? Because they support a lot of wildlife and they produce this acorn that will be food for squirrels, for chipmunks, and so many animals in winter time. You can see some of them already eaten by the squirrels or the chipmunk. And they are all over the place in this garden. This is handmade birdhouse that I got it for Jason for Christmas two years ago. I think it's so pretty. It's so beautiful and he loves it so much. That's a real shinko and solid wood and copper. And on the other side of the pool, we have this little secret garden. The brow stuff here are zinnias that I grew them, I cross-pollinate them. I hope they produce a very wonderful, unique color. I sent some of the seed to Daniel from North Lawn Flower Farm, who is my idol. And I admire her so much. She's the best on YouTube. She's kind, she's professional, she knows a lot of things about gardening and 
I just love her so much. We have a lot of pie trees in our garden and we love them because they look so beautiful in winter time. They provide such a winter interest into our garden. The ground cover here in front of me is English Ivy. They are pretty invasive. It's so hard to get rid of them, so we contain them by flower border to make sure that they don't spread all over the place. We use white pine needles to cover this space as mulch and they're pretty good at preventing weed and that also what we already have in the garden and here is the white pine and the reason they call white pine because they produce this pie corn that has the white on top of it I think if I'm wrong let me know okay guys and right here is our wood log our shed, there are stray cats live inside that shed. And here's our living space. I don't grow a lot of cut flowers here because I wanna grow the stuff that will not be cut. <laughs> so I don't cut them and they make my garden look beautiful. I have some planters right there. And on the right hand side here is my four season gardens that I intentionally make it look nice all year round. I have evergreens and some plants that will look nice in the winter time. I have a lot of ground cover. You can't even see the dirt here. And underneath this, I have a million of tulips that will bloom beautifully in spring. If you want to see it, you can go back to my spring garden tour. I have one more rest bed on the other side of this courtyard. I have the coming rose that I just trained them. Jason built the trellis for me. And here are also my four season gardens. The beautiful big leaves there is hollyhock. They're going to bloom beautifully in spring. Right here is perennial sunflowers. They look pretty dead and sad. I probably gonna clean them up a little bit, but I will not cut it back because I want to leave the seed for the birds. Also, there's a lot of bulbs underneath this, including irises and poppy right there. On that side of the house, I have a lot of holly trees and holly trees are the best the best tree that support wildlife support me in terms of the look of it the berries the winter interest and they also be home for a lot of insects and caterpillars that the bird the animals can enjoy them too but for now look at this holly berries they are so pretty Right in front of me is Pinky Winky Hydrangeas. They have white flowers in early summer. Then they turn pink, then they turn dark pink, and then they turn brown and go like this. Very interesting thing to grow. And right here is our path to go to the Holly Garden. I have two new trees there that I grow them for cutting because they have beautiful leaves. And right here is our holly garden. It's like a tunnel to somewhere. And you will see in a minute where we will go. And ta-da! It will go to the front of our house right here. Beside the holly, we also have the cedar tree here. They also provide berries for the birds. And in winter time, we would watch the bird from the kitchen windows right there. We also have some bird feeders right there. It 
just cheer me up so much in the cold winter time. And here we go. Now we are in the front, and that is our cute chimney. And that's why we bought this house. I mean, it's one of the main reasons why we bought this house. Um, the tree that provides such a orange, yellow color right there is um, one of the native tree. It is the bubble gum or gummy ball. I don't know what it's called, but they are so pretty. And right there is our front door, our pumpkins, and that's the second chimney, but it's not working. The cute hot leaves tree here is Eastern Red Bud. They are so pretty, so, so pretty in spring, in summer, and also in fall. Behind it is flowering dogwood, the red one right there, and also the burgundy one right there is changing the color. And here's our driveway. And here's the bush that I keep forgetting its name. One of you guys already told me in the previous video comment, but sorry I forget about it. Here's a night bark that the deer keep eating it and more bubblegum babies tree right there that's our neighbor house one more bird feeder and these two are red bud trees but they already lose their leaves right here's our banana plant that we're going to overwinter them but for now we just lay them all down like that the front garden is very tough because the deer keep coming and eat everything except this sedums and the cactus this is cohorty cactus it's native plant too and this is sedum and it blooming right now so cute so 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 cute i just love the little details i mean not only in my garden but everywhere you know and this is oak leaf hydrangeas it's also native in New Jersey and I think Northeast. It provides beautiful white flowers that, again, same as Pinky Winky Hundred Year. It bloom as white, then turn pink, then turn dark pink, then turn brown. However, this time of the year, the leaf will change to that color. But because this spot is pretty protected, they don't turn color yet, but they will pretty soon. But anyway, they just so pretty. And this is Abelia. They bloom white, turn pink, and then turn a little peachy brown pink like that. And it will stay like this for, I think, two more months. And it makes the front of my house look more interesting in winter time. And that plant is Mahonia. It will provide berries later. And the bird loves it so much. And here is another entrance to our garden. We will go through a little tunnel right here. And here we go. We back to our garden. Yay! Oh my god, look at the greenhouse from this angle. When I first moved to this house, I tried to control weeds, control pests, control disease, control temperature, even control how the plant grow. I, I found out that it is unrealistic and I gave myself anxiety. And then, you know, I start trying to be creative, how to maintain my garden with less work then I learned that nature is the best tool to help me maintain my gardens, to save my money, to save my time so I can grow more flowers and feel more peaceful. Um, and then I, you know, 
went through a rabbit hole, tried to find the best way to go with the nature. And then I, I got myself anxiety again because, you know, I, I was so anxious to use things that is not eco-friendly. I listened to a lot of people like, don't, don't do this, don't do that, don't use this, don't use that. And then I realized that's, that was not what I want to. Um, and after that, I just learned to follow my instinct with this, my oh, mosquito, with, which is my natural um, habit or natural human being. I don't know how to say it, but I just follow my instinct my heart, I just plant the seed in the soil, I just, you know, do what I do and learn and have fun and just see how it goes. I think that's the best way to garden. What do you think? Anyway, I want to thank you so much for staying here with me in my garden until the end of this video and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye!